एवरीवन सम टेक्निकल हाय 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 लेट अस स्टार्ट देयर सम टेक्निकल स्नैग आई वांटेड टू जस्ट शेयर अ वीडियो ऑफ लैप्रोस्कोपिक फीडिंग गैस्ट्रोस्टोमी फॉर यू है ना आई हैव दैट वीडियो इन माय अनदर आईपैड इट्स नॉट गेटिंग कनेक्टेड बट एनी वेस लेट अस स्टार्ट लेट अस स्टार्ट and meanwhile i am uploading it on my ipad also so i'll just get it connected okay so welcome everyone to an academy i'm dr saurabh dikshit uh, i'm your mentor for this uh, subject of surgery so the topic of discussion today the topic of discussion today is a very important topic for all of you and that the topic is nutrition nutrition yes the topic is nutrition let us just let us just start with this chapter and before that i'll just tell you about the iconic subscription where you can get the benefits of both prep ladder and an academy and remember don't forget to enroll yourself for the neat pg and next base free test it's also for fmg students it's daily it's free of cost it's not at all you have to pay anything and there's a system wise revision batch is also going on so just give me a minute just give me a minute just give me a minute students yes. this some technical snack just give me a minute so when you is okay let me start with the chapter let me start with the chapter the only thing that you need to do is to just download the an academy app and put a code surgery life and let us start with this so let us see the most important points on the base on for the chapter of nutrition students when we talk about nutrition when we talk about nutrition the most important thing is the most important thing is what kind of nutrition you want to support the patient with i'm not talking about the balanced diet i'm talking about the techniques of supplementing the nutrition the techniques of supplementing the nutrition if you talk about supplementing the nutrition what are the roots of supplementing the nutrition the roots could be either via elementary tract via elementary tract either via elementary tract or it is via your yes intravenous soup intravenous soup so remember if it is via elementary tract if it is via elementary tract that is what is known as enteral nutrition that is what is known as enteral nutrition and if it is via iv route if it is via iv route that is what is known as parenteral nutrition so there is one thing which is known as enteral and there is one another thing which is known as parenteral route of nutrition parenteral versus enteral let us talk about this concept of enteral versus parenteral now enteral is preferred or parenteral students everyone knows that until and unless contraindicated yes what is important point about this enteral nutrition this is preferred unless contraindicated this is to be preferred unless contraindicated unless contraindicated this is very 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 important if you talk about parenteral nutrition if you talk about parenteral nutrition yes so if you talk about parenteral nutrition let us see this also parenteral nutrition based upon what iv route it is of two type it is one is a tpn one is a tpn and one is a ppn so what is tpn this is total parenteral nutrition total parenteral nutrition and what is ppn 
don't say peri uh, don't say partial parental nutrition because nutrition is never partial it's a peripheral peripheral parental nutrition so it's a peripheral parental nutrition what is the difference between total and parental uh, peripheral parental nutrition the total is also given via iv route and peripheral is also given via iv route the only difference is what vein you choose if you use the central veins like jugulars like subclavian if you use a central vein like jugulars or subclavian that is what is considered as that is what is considered as your total parental nutrition now do you know what is the biggest drawback of a parental nutrition answer is they are highly viscous solution and they actually burn down the lumen they destroy the lumen with their inflammatory stress and it is because of the carbs it is because of the emulsions it is because of the viscosity so we generally use what the central veins which are having a bigger caliber if you talk about the peri peripheral route peripheral route which one is preferred remember always remember total parental nutrition is preferred and this is via via central venous route in the central venous route also what is the route of choice can you people tell me what is the route of the choice for central venous route answer is for nutrition purpose for nutrition purpose it is the infraclavicular infraclavicular subclavian vein infraclavicular subclavian vein infraclavicular subclavian vein infraclavicular subclavian vein this is where why because if you use jugular jugular is quick to access jugular is quick to access but the problem is the line will be hanging like this nutrition needs to be given for 17 18 hours and do you know the life of the patient or uh, the ergonomics of the patient will be disturbed a lot so if you want to give the nutrition for a longer time let us not buy use this way and here the the cannula will be comfortably lying or resting on the chest wall and that is why subclavian vein is the preferred vein and which approach to subclavian vein it is the infraclavicular the next important thing that you have to know here is yes if you talk about trauma if you talk about trauma the central venous axis route in trauma what is the central venous axis route preferred in trauma answer is the in, yes internal jugular it is the internal jugular internal jugular vein internal jugular vein is the yes the route or peripheral route uh, the iv route that we prefer in trauma patient central venous route for trauma patients is internal jugular vein next is what is the drawback with peripheral venous uh, route the biggest drawback is the first is their short life you must have seen you must have seen that any cannula if you apply the life is only 4 5 days so short life maximum you can keep it for what 7 days maximum you can keep it for 7 days the second is very severe thrombophlebitis very severe thrombophlebitis so thrombophlebitis is one and the second is short life so short life and thrombophlebitis are two big concerns before we move before we move into the depth of the chapter we should know what is the classical difference between a tpn and a ppn now this is again very important why they are two different solutions the composition is not different it is the concentration so what is the difference between tpn and ppn the answer is the concentration let us see if you talk about tpn versus ppn to make it compatible to make it compatible to go via iv route the osmolarity the osmolarity or the concentration the osmolarity or the concentration is less if you talk about less still it is less than 650 milli osmols per liter 650 milli osmols per liter and if you talk about tpn if you talk about tpn this is roughly more than 950 milli osmols per liter 950 milli osmols per liter so you can understand that ppn they are less concentrated and hence they are fit for giving given to be given by what peripheral venous route and tpn they are highly viscous so if you give tpn via peripheral venous route boss within one to two days there will be very severe level of what thrombophlebitis now let us move forward students and before we go into the depth of tpn versus ppn or parental nutrition let us see because we started the day with that enteral nutrition is preferred unless contraindicated 
so we should be knowing one very important thing that what are the what are the contraindications to enteral nutrition so what are the contraindication to enteral nutrition and here we will also discuss the contraindication to parenteral nutrition parenteral nutrition let us see this concept of enteral versus parenteral also the first contraindication that you should be knowing is severe diarrhea so severe diarrhea yes severe diarrhea you cannot give anything by a what enteral route the second is severe vomiting severe vomiting so severe vomiting severe diarrhea severe level of mal absorption severe level of mal absorption yes what else we have what else we have so these are the three one again is obstruction obstruction to the gut perforation to the gut perforation to the gut yes presence of peritonitis presence of peritonitis this is again a contraindication what else what else one very important thing is sepsis sepsis is a relative contraindication for any form of nutrition you should be avoiding do you know if you talk about the parenteral nutrition remember sepsis is absolute contraindication it is going to act like a fuel so it increases trans gut bacterial translocation and that is what is going to cause severe infection so it is absolutely contraindicated in sepsis again the tpn or ppn they are loaded with what carbs so they are absolutely avoided in diabetes mellitus not absolutely relatively avoided then copd copd why these carbohydrates will ultimately break down to release what carbon dioxide and this will cause what hypercapnia so copd is one diabetes mellitus is one sepsis is one one more is one more s congestive heart failure because since they are high osmolar solutions they are high osmolar solutions they will attract the water into the intravascular system and if the patient is already having a congestive heart failure this will precipitate fluid overload so diabetes copd congestive heart failure again alcoholics alcoholic withdrawal if a patient is having alcoholic withdrawal again this is avoided do you know why it is avoided because 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 tpn or parenteral nutrition is containing what carbs and do you know carbs that is dextrose will actu actually absorb the thymine so thymine deficiency is going to be what propensated in this so alcoholic withdrawal copd again in comatose patient in a patient who is having coma again it is avoided why because it increases carbohydrate will break down to release co2 co2 will actually open up the gap junctions and this is going to increase vasogenic edema or in a layman's language you can say it promotes cerebral edema so it increases cerebral edema it increases cerebral edema a very famous question what is the mode of nutrition preferred in comatose patient do a simple ng feed nasogastric feed rice tube yeah? nasojejunal feed yes that is what is done that is what is done again hypokalemia hypokalemia hypophosphatemia so these are the defects which are classically increased by starting the parenteral nutrition so already if a patient is having hypokalemia or hypophosphatemia it's going to be very serious now try to understand their carbohydrate loaded solution so if you give it in any patient the sugar levels will shoot and that is why to avoid this you add the insulin and insulin will always cause intracellular migration of the potassium so if the patient is having hypokalemia further decrease in level of potassium is going to cause a lot of problems so this is very 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 important and these are some contraindications to enteral nutri uh, parenteral nutrition we have acidosis also acidosis also and alkyl losses also alkyl losses also now let us talk let us talk something about tpn versus ppn let us talk something about tpn versus ppn let us see this thing so parenteral nutrition the next heading is parenteral nutrition let us quickly quickly see an overview of parenteral nutrition what do you mean by parenteral nutrition it is nothing but the delivery the delivery of nutrition delivery of nutrition in yes elemental form in elemental form don't say iv form there are many students who say iv form iska matlab hai if you want to eat samosa you can make a solution of samosa and take it no 
it is the basic elements of the nutrition is given in this parenteral nutrition do you know what are the two types of parenteral nutrition that we have in market we have a three in one three in one have you ever seen parenteral nutrition tell me have you ever seen a parenteral nutrition yes have you ever seen a tpn or a ppn i'll try to show it i'll try to show it to you try to understand i've got it from my pharmacy okay this is a parenteral nutrition for you can you see there are three chambers this is one chamber then this is one and then this is the another so there are three chambers can you see all the three chambers this is this is this is one this is the second one and this is the third one so if i show you by one by one this white part is the lipid part this white part is the lipid part this is the carbohydrate part and see this part what is written yes amino acids so this is protein can you see amino acids written can you see this is this is the dextrose injection and can you see this is the lipid part this is the emulsion emulsion fat emulsion so this is what is a classical three in one can you see there are three chambers what we do in order to run them we have to fuse we have to burst this and once it is bursted all the three chambers will be mixed all the three chambers will be mixed and these are the nozzles i'll show you these are the nozzles through which these are the nozzles these are the nozzles through which you can start this nutrition in the patient so this is a classical three in one but why i am not able to show you two in one because two in one is not available in india this is available in west this is available in available in west so us is manufacturing the tpn for both three in one also and two in one also three in one also and two were you able to see that three in one chamber or no were you able to see yes three in one is available for three in one is available for yes developing countries developing countries developing countries is that clear or no so we have three in one three in one versus two in one three in one versus two in one yes or no so three in one what is the difference between we have carb we have carb we have lipids we have carb we have lipids and we have proteins these are the three basic elements yes carbs lipids and proteins try to understand the composition volume based composition 70% of the volume is carb 3 in 1 20% of the volume is lipid and 10% volume is protein 10% volume is protein if you talk about 2 in 1 2 in 1 we don't have lipids we have carb 70 to 80% of them is carb and 10 to 20% of it is lipids 10 to 20% of it is lipid so this is how we define 2 in 1 and 3 in 1 now the question is why lipids are not there why lipids should be there the lipids are not there because lipids actually lipids majority of the time the lipid that was used they will break down to release omega 3 and omega 6 fatty acids but it's not a problem of omega 6 fatty acid but omega 3 fatty acids yes omega 3 fatty acids will give you what a breakdown product of arachidonic acid arachidonic acid arachidonic acid if you talk about arachidonic acid arachidonic acid will release prostaglandins will re release leukotrienes will release thromboxin a2 thromboxin a2 all these things all these things they actually all these things they delay healing they delay healing yes or no and once they delay healing once they delay healing they actually prolong hospital stay prolong hospital stay now the funny question is the funny question is in us in us everything is under the medical insurance scheme so which is this word is run by handful of economists and insurance companies are also under their control so at a time in us if there is 1000 people if there are 1000 people on tpn and average increase in hospital stays 5 days so 5000 tpn days you have extra burden so the question came why do you require these fat you require these lipids for assimilation of fat soluble vitamins between a between d between e between k so over the time they have published some papers that their people are not deficit with these they are not chronically malnourished 
and acute deficiency of vitamin A, D, E, K is not seen and hence they don't want a lipid component. But remember, remember majority of the other countries, they still take except this 3-in-1 convention. So in developing countries, yes, we take a 3-in-1 TPN, 3-in-1 TPN. I hope this part is clear. Along with this, along with this, they are, they are having others also, others. What are the other things that we have? Everyone has this, yes. Insulin is present in all of them, yes. PPI is present in all of them. Again, sterile water is present in it. Sterile water is added. Why sterile water is added? Yes, to dilute, to dilute it. Yes, along with this, you have all macro and micronutrients. Macro and micronutrients. I use parenteral nutrition literally for all of my patients. All my surgically surgically ill patients, post-operative big surgeries, I always use TPN because in the immediate post-operative phase, I'll not be able to start what with the nutrition. And students, nutrition and fluid, they are the only two magics that can heal the patient. If you think your surgical technique will heal the patient, you are absolutely in a myth. It's the nutritional status. So from day on, day one onwards, recently I did an enterocutaneous fistula and that was a patient with a chronic enterocutaneous fistula. After surgery, I knew that I will not be able to start with the feeding because the bowel was what? It was uh, the anastomotic line was, the bowel wall lumen was very narrow and I would have started, I would have started, it would be what? A leak. Why PPI is added? Since you are not giving anything by IV root. Yes, you are not giving by anything by IV root. There is always a risk of gastritis. Yes, stress-induced gastritis. To reduce stress-induced gastritis, a PPI is added. A PPI is added to reduce the stress-induced gastritis factor. Is that clear or no? So this is what is the composition of 3-in-1 versus TPN. If you talk about the components, within 5 minutes, we are just going to conclude this parental nutrition. If you talk about components, if you talk about components, the next thing is carb, if you talk about, we take 5% <coughs> to 10% dextrose. 5% to 10% dextrose. Dextrose. Remember the maximum permissible, the maximum permissible, permissible carbohydrate flow. The maximum permissible carbohydrate flow is 5 to 7 milligram per kg per hour if you increase it beyond this level the patient will have the patient will have a failure will have a failure liver failure again the maximum permissible weight by volume composition of carb answer is 25 percent these two things are to be remembered why these two things are to be remembered because we also have a we also have an option of home based tpn where you can calculate the calories you can calculate the proteins and you can prepare short bowel syndrome is a condition where you have to give tpn for maybe months and there not in india we don't practice this concept of uh, home based tpn but yes in us they also teach patients how to prepare a home based tpn and give it to the patient next is next is what about the lipids? Lipids, you know, is available in form of lipids is available in form of emulsion and this emulsion, emulsion, we prefer it from a fish oil. Why fish oil is preferred? Because the majority of the, yes, fatty acid is omega-6, which is a eicosapentaenoic acid. That is a 21 chain fatty acid, 21 chain. So the component of prostaglandins, leukotrienes and thromboxane A2 is drastically reduced. We don't prefer soy oil. Soya oil is no more preferred. So we prefer because in soya oil, there is in excess of omega-3 fatty acids. This is what is very important. What is the average weekly dose that we require? What is the average weekly dose that we require? Yes, average dose required. Average dose required is 500 ml per week. 500 ml of lipid is required per week yes required normal person a normal person requires a 500 ml of lipids next is the proteins the proteins if you talk about the proteins we give it in form of amino acids amino acids essential amino acids essential amino acids you know what is the normal protein requirement 0.8 to 1 gram per kg per uh, uh, per day yes in case of stress, in case of stress, this ratio is increased to 1.5 to 2 gram 
per kg per day. In case of starvation, in case of starvation, this is increased to 2.5 to 3 grams per kg per day. So can you remember this? 1, just remember it like 1, 2, 3, 1, 2, 3, 1, 2, 3. If you talk about the calorie requirement, the average calorie requirement, the average calorie requirement, the answer is 30 kilocalories per kg per day. Remember, this doesn't mean that if you have a 60 kg person and the calorie requirement is 60 into 30, that is 1800 kilocalories. So you will take three samosas and a cold drink. You will say 500, 500, 500, that is 1500 and 300 from cold drink. I have taken a balanced diet. No, remember 30 kilocalorie per kg per day. And out of this 30 kilocalorie, at least 30 percent, at least 30 percent should come from your proteins. So 30 percent should be from your proteins. This is very, 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 very important. 30 percent should come from your proteins. Again, is protein is to protein is to lipid is to fat, or you can say carb. What is the ratio? It should be two is to three is to five. Before I conclude this topic. I'll take two, three minutes because I have not still given you algorithm of nutrition. I've not given you algorithm of nutrition. I'll give that. And before that, let us see the complication of parental nutrition. The complications, the complications of parental nutrition. The complication of parental nutrition. The most common complication. Can you tell me the most common complication? It is hyperglycemia. It is hyperglycemia. The second most common complication, the answer is fluid overload. It is fluid overload. Very important questions. What is the criteria for fluid overload? What is the criteria for fluid overload? Weight gain. Weight gain more than 1 kg per day. Weight gain more than 1 kg per day. This is the criteria for fluid overload. Yes. The third most common complication, the third most common complication is electrolyte imbalance and do you know electrolyte imbalance is the cause of mortality also yes so electrolyte imbalance it is the most common cause of death the most common cause of death in long term tpn therapy this question is also very 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 important so long term tpn therapy long term tpn therapy the most common cause of death is electrolyte imbalance students you can have any of them you can have hypo which is more preferred than hyper don't mug up the concepts try to understand hypo because you're adding the fluid to the venous component or the blood you're actually diluting these so hypo has to happen yes or no so hypo is more common than hyper so potassium sodium calcium magnesium phosphate etc 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 chloride everything you can have hypokalemia hyperkalemia but it is more prevalent next is we have still we have read majority of the things but still we are not clear with the overview of the nutrition when to start what kind of nutrition let us see this also so if you have a slightest of the doubt sir should i start nutrition if you have a slightest of the drought should i start nutrition start nutrition nutrition means supplemental form of nutrition the next question is yes how many days of lack of feed how many days of lack of feed or you can say anticipated lack of feed what is the concept of anticipated lack of feed anticipated lack of feed suppose suppose you are doing a surgery and you know that after six seven days my patient will not be able to take anything that is what is anticipated lack of feed very good very good Raj very good so if you have less than seven days yes less than seven days then this is not needed supplemental nutrition is not needed if you have for more than equal to seven days for more than equal to seven days yes you require a supplemental dose so yes yes start nutrition when you want to start nutrition very good students very good Praveen Beta. when you start when you want to start the nutrition the next question is we know you know everyone knows that unless contraindicated you have to start with what type of nutrition you have to start with yes enteral so you will ask the question is enteral nutrition contraindicated is enteral nutrition contraindicated 
the answer could be yes it is contraindicated or the answer could be no it is not contraindicated if it is not contraindicated then you will start enteral nutrition start enteral nutrition if it is contraindicated yes then you have to go for what mode of nutrition parenteral nutrition now here again you have to see whether you have to give parenteral nutrition for a longer span then you choose the central venous route if you want to give it via iv route yes yeah you can use a uh, peripheral venous route you can use a ppn then so here again you need to ask yourself a question duration of support duration of support duration of support answer could be less than one week if it is less than one week you start tpn start tpn great pravit great if it is bachcha more than one week more than one week you have to start what students ppn ppn i have already shown you a ppn yes or no how to identify whether it is a tpn or ppn always it is written can you see always it will be written it will be written peri can you see peri 1100 peri 11100 it's always written it's always written if you want to see the if you want to see the osmolarity osmolarity is also written i'll try to focus osmolarity for you can you see the osmolarity osmolarity this osmolarity is written 624 624 was the osmolarity i have already shown you also 624 624 is the osmolarity 624 is a osmolarity of this so yes let us move forward so if you want to i have told you na less than 650 so if you talk about that enteral nutrition the, again the question is what is the duration of support duration of support required answer could be sir i require it for less than 4 weeks if you require it for less than 4 weeks you have either rt feed rice stew feed or you have nj feed students rt and nj rt feed and nj feed depends whether depends whether the patient has a good gastric emptying because if the gastric emptying is not good and you give the food in the stomach you will always have a reverse yes and this will cause aspiration pneumonitis if you require support for more than 4 weeks you have a more 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 important things fg and fj what do you mean by fg and fj feeding gastrostomy feeding gastrostomy feeding gastrostomy and feeding jejunostomy feeding gastrostomy and feeding jejunostomy these are the two important things that we have what is a feeding gastrostomy and what is a feeding jejunostomy let us see and both of them have their own advantage both of them have their own advantage if you talk about feeding gastrostomy you put a you put a tube directly into the stomach and you can give the feed from this side what is the advantage of this what is the advantage of fg the advantage of fg is that you can go for bolus feeding you can go for bolus feeding this is natural way of na feeding you can go for bolus feeding so no dumping no dumping is seen in this no dumping is seen yes if you go for fg that is different if you go for fj you are putting the tube in the jejunum the drawback is you need to give the drawback is the big drawback is multiple feeds required multiple small feeds multiple small feeds so patient care is very important and then second problem is dumping dumping diarrhea is very common diarrhea is very 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 common with these patients very common with these patients now try to see i will show you how we do fj how we do fg i'll try to show you i'll try to show you just wait for i'll try to show you both of them just give me a second so this is how you do the first thing is that you need to trace the ligament of treats can you see what is this this is ligament of treats or you can say we call it as duodeno duodeno jejunal flexure duodeno jejunal flexure duodeno jejunal flexure dekho one i will show in lap and one i will show in open theek hai taki dono aapko samajh mein aaye lap bahut sare logo ko samajh bhi nahi aati hai so after leaving 10 to 15 cm of jejunum after leaving 10 to 15 cm of jejunum you make one incision yes let us see you take a purse string can you see i have taken a purse string yes can you see i have taken a purse string 
what is this first string yes 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 you have taken a first string so what is the advantage of first string if you tighten it up yes it will just constrict this orifice and now what you will do you will open this you will open this lumen yes you will open this lumen so when you open this lumen try to understand i'm opening it with a blade can you see i have opened this lumen and now i will put the foley's catheter and tighten it this is what is known as this is a bursting way of doing this so when you do a bursting when you do a bursting yes when you do a bursting closure when you do a bursting string closure what is this technique known as this is known as a stamp technique this is known as a stamp technique so you do a two double bursting now sometimes you can go for a sub serosal sub serosal tunneling if you do if you go for a sub serosal tunneling yes what is this known as you must have heard of witzels you must have heard of witzels this is what is witzel kya hota hai what is sub serosal tunneling try to see you take one bite here 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 this is what is known as sub serosal tunneling you will this is what is known as sub serosal tunneling this is sub serosal tunneling you tunnel it you tunnel it in the serosa this is what is known as witzels this is what is known as witzels and ultimately you will what fix it with the fix it with the what abdominal wall this is what is fixing with the abdominal wall students today you will have to just forgive me actually i got busy in morning and i was trying just before 5 minutes before the class i was trying to shift a video in my second ipad which is connected to with this obs system i put it hai na but i will show you i will show you how we do a laparoscopic feeding jejunostomy from my second from my second ipad i hope that will not be a problem for you so i will show this so if you don't have a problem try to see this case this is the target that we have can you see this is the target from where i will start the surgery i'll try to show it bache yes so from this is the site from where the feeding tube will go feeding tube will go yes or no this is the type site from which the feeding tube will go and now i will just fast forward it so that you can see this so once you are inside the stomach students this is the this is the incisura which i am showing you this is the incisura angularis when we do bariatric surgery this is the most important landmark and we start cutting the stomach so the first job that we need to do in this bariatric in this surgery we need to check whether the stomach is freely mobile or no so for this what i will do okay so i will i will just fast forward it yes so i am trying a bursting suture now try to see how i am doing a bursting can you see i am doing a bursting suture for this patient i am doing a bursting suture for this patient i couldn't upload it on my ipad that is why it's becoming a bit difficult so i am taking a bursting try to see how i am taking a bursting can you people see is it comfortable or shall i stop for you ha huh? is it comfortable can you people manage so i'm taking a bursting and then and then i'll just forward it i'll just forward it so once i have done the bursting suture with a harmonic scalpel can you see this is a scalpel yesterday i was telling you this is a scalpel i am cutting with the scalpel yes i am cutting with the scalpel i don't use monopolars i don't use monopolars in my ot this is a recent case which i have done so now i will do i have i will cut it and i will open the lumen so i am cutting it cutting it cutting it and then with a the grasper i will open up this cavity with a grasper i will open up this cavity it has gone inside yes and now i will open up this cavity you will see with a with the artery forceps with the artery forceps i will open the lumen can you see i have opened the lumen don't worry about the bleedings don't worry about the bleedings it's not a problem yes it has gone inside yes it has gone inside and now now i will it's yes i will very soon upload this on my youtube channel also and now i will put a rails tube can you see a foley's catheter i am putting a 20 number foley's catheter inside it 
I am pushing a 20 number Foley's catheter inside it. So it is gone. So now I will inflate the bulb of this Foley's. I will inflate the bulb and now you will see I will tighten the purse string also. I will tighten the purse string also. See, I will tighten the purse string now. So I will tighten the purse string. Try to see this. This is how we do a surgeon's knot. Just see. So just see how we do it. So yesterday I was showing you know, how we take a surgeons and how we take a reef. Just see how we do a knotting in this. Okay. So try to understand and now what you do this is the completed surgery this is the surgery which has completed actually now we'll fix the fix it with the abdomen I will show a leak test also for you people I'll show a leak test also actually it's a bit problematic so this finally what we do finally I'm fixing it with the abdominal wall can you see it's I'm fixing the stomach with the abdominal wall also so that it is not hanging below it is not hanging below just see it will be fixed to the abdominal wall just see it will be fixed to the abdominal wall can you see it has been fixed now the stomach has been fixed with the abdominal wall already the tube is there ultimately i will show you a leak test also so this is the final view this is the final view of the surgery can you see this is the tube a tube is there the stomach has been fixed but say surgery laparoscopy surgery is not about lap yes yes it was harmonic laparoscopic surgery is not about is not about cholecystectomy or yes appendicectomy it's all about taking purse string do you know taking the strings taking the suturing on the roof is the toughest toughest task it seems ki why why many a times i'm slipping the answer is because when you are working on the roof you have to convert to change your light cable to 12 o'clock position so if you are seeing right your instrument will move left that is a mirror imaging so try to understand you are seeing like this you are moving here yes you are moving here the camera i'm moving here the camera is moving there i'm moving here the camera this is what is the problem so Taking the knots on the wall of the abdomen is really a tough and that is why when you repair a hernia on the roof, that is ventral hernia and if you have to take sutures, because this is going to be really very tough. I am very sorry I couldn't do but uh, I show update it on my iPad but very soon I will be uploading it on my telegram, uh, on my this uh, that uh, YouTube channel also. So an academy team will be doing some editing also in that and you will get the full unedited video so don't worry. And this is all about the today's session. I have tried my level best to put some efforts to let you understand the things in a clinical way, not with the books. I hope you people enjoyed. Yes, I'm very sorry for that bad quality of video presentation. But I wanted to show I could have skipped it also. But then you don't get to understand what is FJ and what is the difference between FG and FJ. Yes or no? So thank you. Till then. Bye bye.